from a certain point of view, I believe was the terminology I used a few episodes back. And I think we have seen that that prediction held true because everything about this episode was about us finally getting to see soul's side of what happened on the planet 16 years ago against what we already have heard um, happened from the coven's side of view. Uh, spoilers ahead. I don't do spoiler free. So if you haven't watched the episode yet, go ahead and hit the pause, go away, watch it, come back and we'll go from here. Um, I think like 80% of this episode was literally, you know, soul's reflection of what happened back in the planet. And my, oh my, does this cast a, you know, cloud of, it's just, there are so many things that from both sides of the equation can be seen as like good things to do, but the results because of each side's prejudice against each other and fear of each other, um, the ultimate failure in communication. And I think that that's something that's super interesting here to see that you know, ultimately what leads to the Jedi's downfall here is fear. And as we all know, you know, fear leads to anger, blah, 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 blah. Fear is the path of the dark side. And because they fear the coven, they fear what they might have done to the girls. They fear what the girls are. Um, they've all allowed their emotions to become clouded. And what's really interesting is she, throughout the whole episode, is acting as like the guiding beacon telling him you need to slow down because let, let me back up a little bit before we even get to what happens <laughs> you know at the coven they're on the planet seeking emergence in the force right now this is something we had previously only heard mention of uh with anakin and we get a broader description of the terminology here in this episode and i know this is where some hardcore you know, Star Wars fans are going to be out there ranting and raving and saying, but they're messing with canon. <laughs> um, it was never explained what exactly Evergence was. We were only ever told that Anakin was Evergence in the Force. That was it. Anakin was Evergence in the Force. Um, and I think it's interesting to take that concept and play with it and say, well, what if there were other Convergences in the Force that have happened, and what if those were more than just about a person? Um, and so we get a greater explanation here that Divergence is essentially, uh, a, you know, a highly focused area where the Force is manifesting itself and creating life, whether that be life on a dead planet, because this planet was supposedly dead, I think, a hundred years ago, is what they get told, and then they show up and it's teeming with life. And they can sense a virgins has happened. So they get sent as this research team to find the virgins in the Force and study it because the Jedi Order would like to know more about these virgins in the Force. And while they're there, they're, you know, testing the soil, testing the planet, everything else. And Sol, while he's out testing, comes across this tree. And that tree underneath it has two little girls. And this goes back to the episode we saw previously from the girls' point of view. Um, or from Osha's point of view, anyway. Um, and all that plays out in front of Sol's eyes. And he follows the girls back to the compound, and he sees this coven, and they're preparing for a ritual, and he can, you know, sense these two girls, and he sees the force being used for various things, and he is terrified, and he fears for the girl's safety. And he returns to his master and tells her all of this, and she's like, "We, it's too much of a risk. You're putting your own emotion into it. Stop being fearful of what might be happening to the girls and let's contact the council and you know and things just spiral out from there as he sort of convinces her to that his fears are legitimate so that she goes back um they go together she's going to go in alone so she doesn't appear a threat he convinces her to take the whole team so then they show up as a jedi squad um, and we go back to the point of view of the women of the coven. They were having a sacred ritual, and in the middle of the ritual, here comes these Jedi who literally forced their way through the elevator, hacked the elevator doors to come on up, and then forced their way in. That's the point of view of the coven leader, the mother. And from the Jedi's point of view, um, they just want to make sure that the kids are safe. And the whole time she's worried about not 
coming off as a threat and just wanting to investigate Sol's claims because she needs to report back to the council. And before she can do so, she needs to confirm that everything he's telling her about this grave threat and everything else is actually true. And that gets into... Um, uh, is he shown here? Torben, I think is his name. The the kid Padawan. I don't think he's shown in this one. Um, her Padawan, who... In the middle of all of this, his eyes go black and he falls to his knees. Well, we get the other side of that, which is the um, the mother inside of his head and convincing him about this whole... He, he wants to go back to Coruscant. He was f expressing his frustration to her earlier. And she weasels her way into his mind and uses her own powers to say, I'll, I'll let you go back to Coruscant. And, and she convinces him. And once she does, she's controlling his mind. And his eyes go black. So there's all this stuff that goes down. They have the confrontation. The girls, you know, the, the coven leader agrees to let the girls be tested. And then we go back to the ship. You know, she's trying to contact the council. Um, they're testing the girls. Um, they come to find out, you know, May is lying, obviously. And they ask her questions about what does the mark on your forehead mean and... and what does that mean that you're going to be the member of the coven? How is that possible when you're still a, just a child? And they, they're trying to find out more. And she keeps coming back to, we shouldn't be interrupting in this cultural thing, you know. But then some of the things she hears Soul talking about, are, are she's seen them become evident. And so his fears are now becoming her fears. And when they hear the answers they hear from Osha... Um, you know, the girl goes back, she reports, the coven says they're going to talk about it, and the Jedi are going to wait their answer. So she contacts the council, tells everybody to just relax. Um, they're starting to, he's starting to get the others riled up that they need to go save the girl and everything else. And she comes back with the council's answer, and the council's answer is no, we're not going in. We're leaving the girls there. It's, it would be, it would be wrong of us to culturally manipulate and and not respect someone else's culture. Um, you know, the girls should not be separated. They need to do their own thing. Um, it's not up to us to interfere. And in the middle of all of this, uh, her Padawan has a mental break. Because he's like, so, you know, he just has a mental break. And he gets in his head that, um, you know, because they start discussing the fact that the girls... Um, uh, the midichlorian count, I forgot about this, the midichlorian count comes into play here because both the girls' midichlorian count are off the charts and they realize that they're both split from the same symbiote, I think is the word he used. Um, and this gets into a conversation between these two about how, oh my goodness, could this be the virgins? Could they have been created two consciousnesses from the same source? Oh no, that's, if it, this is the virgins, like the Jedi Council told us to come here seeking the virgins and if the twins are the virgins... Wow, the council's most recent order, it calls in a question that order because they don't have the full facts and we do. And they're debating this and her Padawan has a mental break and he's like, well, we're going to get the twins. We can go back to Coruscant because his whole mind is focused on that. He's still basically under the brainwashing and he takes off. And of course, they take off after him because she does not want to risk an incident. And she's trying to tell him, you need to stop the, stop my Padawan before he causes something. We need to leave you know, etc. And things just spiral out of control. Um, he gets there following the Padawan and they sense the same thing and they agree to go in. You know, the elevator's locked and, and they agree to infiltrate and get the girls. Um, and as this is happening, quick commercial break, everyone, to celebrate and give thanks to all of these amazing people who keep me on the air full time. Really appreciate the support. All you got to do is join as a member. You get access to private videos. You can also do super thanks on any upload or super chats and stickers on any live stream or premiere you see. And beyond that, don't forget we're multi-streaming over on Twitch now, so you can support over there as well. Thanks so much to everybody. Let's get back to the video at hand. Entire Coven uses their connect connected power to take control of this dude, the Jedi, the, the Wookiee Jedi. And he goes into battle against him and the Padawan and just almost kills them until she shows up and manages to break his connection, which kills all the Coven members, 
or, or at least stuns them. I'm, I'm, it did something because they all fell under. Maybe they were stunned and then were consumed by the fire afterwards. But they all fell. Um, and she's like, at this point, is committed and says, get the twins. He runs off to save the twins, gets there. He tries to use the Force to save both of them, and he can't. He's not strong enough in the Force, and he ultimately can only save one, and that's Osha. And that's where we get back to the ship, and she's having a meltdown about the council said, no, you guys went and did this anyway. This is all on you. And he wants to turn himself in. And she's like, no, you're not. You're not going to further destroy this girl's life after the promises that you gave her and the fact that her dream now is to become a Jedi. You're not going to take that away from her. We're going to tell the council we did exactly what they said. And and we're going to tell them the truth. May started a fire. Everybody died. We're going to keep it short and simple. And that's it. And we're going to cover this up entirely. And that's it. And you're just like, oh my god. Like, this was one of the coolest pieces of of Star Wars television I've seen in the entire Disney Plus run so far. Super, super powerful episode. With just all sorts of, you know, because at the whole time, she's being very peaceful and she's willing to let her child go. Um, and in the middle of all of this, uh, well, that was something I kind of skimmed over. In the middle of all of this, when him and the the before the the you know before things get really dicey, they like meet up with with the mom, him and the 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 um the Padawan, uh, Tenebra, I think is his name. I always forget. And and they have a you know a discussion with her, but it's very tense. And the main sidekick of her, the girl who bore the children, is super aggressive. And the Padawans are under the influence, and they're the ones who eventually start fighting. And that's when Soul sees the leader of the coven. She goes like mist-like, and he goes to like use his lightsaber to like interrupt the mist. And it turns out she's in the mist, and you know he and he kills her. And that's what just the whole thing just goes from there. And then you end up on the ship with Osha waking up and them telling her. May set a fire. Everyone died. We're on our way to Coruscant, and that's it. So the it's it's not a it's not a lie per se, but it is absolutely smoothing over their participation in and their errors in what happened in an attempt to you know on the one hand from a certain point of view protect the child. But from another point of view, they're also doing it to protect their own collective asses. Super powerful episode, man. I have so many thoughts at the end of this. Um, it's great to see the Jedi in a not-so-perfect light. Everyone has failings. Everyone makes mistakes. Um, it's very, It was a very interesting piece of television. I really enjoyed it. I cannot wait for the season finale. Love to hear your thoughts. Drop them down below. Like, subscribe, hit the bell icon. Daily streams here and on Twitch. See you next time, everybody. May the Force be with you.